Time to check in with Mayor Marianne Mead Ward about what's happening in Burlington. Well, let's talk housing because that's so let's. much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we uh, didn't meet our housing targets, which most people know. Provincial and, housing uh, targets. Uh, provincial yeah. housing targets. So we unanimously as a council uh, accepted the province's pledge to enable 29,000 units in the next 10 years. And that word is very important, enable. We don't build foundations, we don't build houses, we issue permits and we set planning policy. Uh, but we are being judged on our ability to meet targets on the number of foundations poured. And so we didn't meet that target because we are infill, high density, complex, four, five, six tower uh, developments. Not subdivisions, not largely. Not subdivisions where it's a foundation, a foundation, a foundation, a foundation. And so we have uh, said uh, multiple times to the minister, um, the metric is wrong because because how you know municipalities you're judging us on something we don't control. It's also inaccurate. So they use Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation data, and that data is wildly inaccurate. Yeah, to the tune of uh, we're double what they say we are. So they say we have about 300 foundation starts in the last month we we say we have 600 according to our data and i've talked to mayors across the province and they have said uh it, it's inaccurate for them too and there's now there's real money on the line mm -hmm. so the building, because the money is being handed out building faster fund says if you meet your targets you get a check and so we don't get a check because it's the wrong metric and it's inaccurate. So I've communicated that to the minister formally in writing very recently when the latest set of data came out. Uh, but many times we've said this is not the right metric for municipalities, especially when there's money on the line. And how much money are we talking here for Burlington? How much is, is being lost off the table? Millions, millions of dollars a year. Would, would be coming our way. And, and that is very counterproductive because that money we need to build all of the infrastructure, community infrastructure, hard infrastructure to enable housing. So it becomes this uh, circular uh, failure that we can't get the money we need to get the, to build the services that we need to get the housing. And, and so we're gonna keep on this treadmill until the, the, the metric is fixed and the funding envelope is fixed. Okay. Let's talk happier news. Let's. An update to the Robert Bateman <laughs> Community Center. Yes, one of the things that we use that money for yeah. is community amenities. We're not just building housing. Uh, Robert Bateman Community Center residents chose to keep the name. It was a former high school. So uh, we've got Brock University moving in in 2025. Halton District School Board is doing their adult education. Tech Place is going to be there. Uh, our library is expanding and uh, there's thousands and thousands of uh, leftover space for community amenities. Plus there's a pool and a gym. All that uh, is happening. And so I had the opportunity to tour that with the president of Brock recently. Uh, and it is absolutely spectacular. Like it gave me chills. Oh, it, it that's was, nice. It was spectacular. And when does it open? 2025. Okay. Yeah. And there'll be another phase of renovations for some of the community space. It'll be fitted up now, but, but we're out actually engaging with the community around what they see and what they want to use that space for. So there'll be a lot of space available for programming or groups to, uh, to do, to run programs out of, but there's also a lot of space that will just be, um, vacant for people to use on an ad hoc basis. So it is, it is going to be a true community learning hub. Uh, it, it will be the biggest by a long shot community center in the city of Burlington. Uh, we're also planning uh, some enhancements to the green space. We own a park uh, nearby. There's a school nearby that we're gonna help them uh, build some uh, playground structures, putting in walking paths. It, I mean, it is a spectacular community space and to see it all come together. You know, I've seen the papers. I've, you know, the, the drawings and the visualizations, we voted for the funding, we voted to buy it, but to actually stand there and, and see it all coming together and imagine, it was just, uh, it is gonna be so spectacular. Awesome. We've got about a minute left. We have to talk about making space for the Jefferson Salamanders. Yes. <laughs> We close King Road so they can mate. We yes. take our mating rituals very, very seriously. Uh, Jefferson salamander is an endangered species. They come out uh, of their hibernation, so to speak, and they mate right around this time of year. And, and they have, uh, there's a specific area up on the escarpment on King Road in Burlington 
where they cross to meet uh, to meet their mate. So our bachelor salamander Jeff is looking for his Sally. <laughs> We've named them, and we gotta let them do their thing without getting smushed. Yes, uh, by a car. So, uh, so we have uh, we have closed the road for uh, Jeff and Sally, and yeah. and it'll stay it'll stay closed for about a month. Yeah. Okay, I love that you do this. We all love that you do this because we all love talking about the Jefferson salamanders. Okay, affordable housing for all, even salamanders. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> okay. we, we do it for everybody, all, all species, great and small. <laughs> Marianne Meadward, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you.